to call the December 9th, 2021 committee meeting of finance and facilities to order. We'll stand for the pledge. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now we'll turn it over to Ms. Q to walk us through the agenda. Well, the bulk of this agenda is going to be done by Ken Matthews from CBD. Um, our first item on the agenda was a continuation of the Linwood update that we had at the last meeting. It's here to talk about that signage difference and the adjustment to the wall. Yes. Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, so for Linwood, there was a couple things, uh, some changes that were potentially going to be made that were presented. One of them was there's a retaining wall out front. There's a uh, concern that really it should be a little bit higher, but you're not going to build it higher out of brick. So a fencing option was presented it was priced we received the price last week it is literally double what we expected and frankly we think it's outrageous i called another miscellaneous metal contractor uh to discuss it and that was correct it should be about half of what it is so they submitted it for ninety thousand dollars it should be more about forty to forty five thousand so we're gonna obviously take a step back see if we can either bid it out or have another contractor price it that studener can do it so uh, we're going to continue working on that. Uh, the second uh, change that was potentially going to occur is the Linwood sign. If you've been over there, it kind of reads up. So there was uh, some thought about maybe changing the sign. We got pricing to do that. It's, we're reviewing that right now. It was, again, much higher than we would have expected. Uh, Stubner's putting project management time on it, like silly things like that that are really not necessary came in at about 17,000 to fix and replace the sign where it would be vertically oriented instead of horizontally oriented. So we're gonna work through that, see if we can get the number down. Um, you know, it was priced worst case scenario because if you pull the letters off, you could damage the metal panels and to replace them. And of course the metal panels are a very long lead time. So just to get one panel, they can't even tell us how long it would take to get. So. Those are the some of the things we're working through with that, but hopefully here in the next week or two, uh, we'll have it figured out and, and be able to come back with better pricing on that. Um, any questions on that? I mean, it's really, it's a, a pricing exercise, honestly, at this point to get the best price possible, so. Um, and then once the prices are kind of as low as they'll go, it would be a decision for the board or would it come in as a change order to the current project uh, so if if we can get for for the wall let's take that railing um if stubner can get another contractor to price it much better it, then it can just be done under them if not because of this cost of it it would have to go out to bid is anything over what is it martha Twenty five thousand has to go out to oh, less than 25 but yes it's it's less than that so we we could bid it uh, and do it that way and get you know, we'll get competitive numbers if we go that route um, it would just take a little bit longer to, to get it done of course but uh, it's not the end of the world right now um, all right so then the second thing on the agenda is going through project budget so and, and just an update of where we are with contingency and, and everything else so we'll start with Linwood you know it's a 34.1 million dollar project the actual hard construction costs of that uh, for the four prime contractors was 26.5 million. Currently, uh, the balance on the contingency, knowing everything we, we know to date, which uh, the project is essentially complete, is $754,000. And then the balance of payment to the contractors, that's still left to pay. So between the retention that's held and a few open items, there's still almost 1.3 million for them to, to bill. Um, and then pending change orders to be submitted. So this is, um, you know, we just got a handful of change orders from December, 2020. So if that tells you the paperwork issues that we have to, you know, deal with on these jobs, it's, it can be quite frustrating. But they were plugged, there were numbers that we knew about, so they were always in the budget. So those are, when we say pending, they're just yet to be submitted to you all for formal approval. 
um, but for, to put in an AIA change order. Um, so that's a snapshot of Linwood where we are. Uh, and then just from a progress standpoint, they're, they're pretty much down to it. There's some punch list items left to do. They will have to come back in the spring to do some additional seeding and cleanup. They just unfortunately just did not get enough done to, for the grass to be able to grow in all the areas. Um, and any, can I ask yes, a quick question? Any, Sorry, just so I'm reading this right. So um, the contingency balance, that's how much will be left over after the balance of pay ops to enroll. Oh, yes. So I'm okay, sorry. So, that's so all have, that. Like, once all the two things below are paid, then we have like yeah, 750 so left. Am I reading that right? Right now, with everything we know, there's $754,000 left over. Okay. So yes, okay, it, it includes all those Okay. Numbers. Just wanted to make sure I was reading that correctly. Thank you. Um, so for the high school project, uh, phase one, so the three-story classroom addition and some of the interior renovations, that had a budget of a little over 10 million. The actual hard construction costs were 4 point, or excuse me, 7.4. Uh, and right now, so the contingency balance is, you know, uh, down to only 48,000, but again, the project's over. There's only one or two other, uh, like, kind of real changes that we're potentially talking about. Uh, but so there should be no issue with that little bit that's left. Then the balance to pay the contractor. So they've been greatly reduced because their work's done, punch list is done. Uh, so there's only $153,000 of con, uh, retainage left for them all to bill. And then there is still uh, $38,000 of outstanding change orders to be submitted for formal approval. Um, so again, uh, not not a lot of contingency left but it, you know this project didn't have anywhere the contingency like a linwood has much bigger complicated project and then uh we just started phase two the music wing edition uh so that's a 9.8 million dollar uh, budget construction's 8.5 of that uh contingency balance is 420 we started with uh 500 000. and the of course, the balance to pay the contractors, they just started, so we have a long way to go, but just wanted to, to put that there. They've just put in their first couple invoices in October and November, and then there's only uh, $14,000 of pending change orders. Any questions on that? Sorry, I hit the button by accident. On the budget or contingency spending or changes? This might be a question for Martha with the 750000 that may kind of stay in the pot, um, not be used for Linwood. What then happens in terms of the budget and those funds? How might they be reallocated to the pipeline of construction projects that we have? You, it, it's exactly what you said. It will be reallocated. <laughs> to the pipe the pipeline of projects so that um, as we get do the future financings both this coming year and the next year we'll potentially be able to draw down less because of the money that's left over we can we can borrow less because the 750,000 would be the first funds that we would use for the next projects correct thank you Sense. so then we uh, moving on to Chatham Park and Cooperstown the climate control projects. So we had very favorable bid results. So on the left, the left side is what was presented to you last month for the, the project uh, cost estimates. Then of course the bids came in. So you can see here, starting with Chatham Park, the hard construction cost estimate was 5.4 million. It actually came in, uh, the bids came in at 4.1. Obviously a, a tremendous savings there from what was originally thought. Soft costs and contingency essentially stay the same. So you can see the overall revised project estimate is you know, that $1.3 million less. There were two alternates. One is in the original part of the building to replace the counters under the windows. They're laminated countertops you know, with chip edges and all beat up. So this is to replace them with a solid surface counter so it can take a beating. Obviously lasts a lot longer. So that's... Uh, at that ad alternate was $97,000, uh, 97500 uh, And then there was another one. There was some 
There's a crawl space underneath Chatham that had some piping hanger issues that were a concern. So we did put it as an ad alternate here. Um, this pricing is uh, really, we, f we feel for the scope of work way out there uh, and we would not recommend accepting that, but due to where you are in the budget, uh, we would recommend the, the counter replacement certainly for, uh, to be included in the project. Um, and just uh, for, for uh, all you new folks on the board, so the, basically the scope of the, of the projects are uh, adding a chiller to each building. They just have hot water and heat only. Uh, so it's to put a whole new infrastructure in, all cold water. There is some uh, casework replacement in all the uh, classrooms. There are center islands with sinks that are, you know, the original uh, from the 50s. So those are getting replaced with it. Um, and then the unit ventilators on, along the exterior wall get ripped out. They get replaced with new shelving. So it's kind of a light touch in the room itself. It's really the mechanical side of it uh, at Chatham Park. There's some underground tanks to remove and it gets a uh, new boiler as well. One boiler was done uh, three or four years ago and then this is to replace the other original boiler. So uh, in similar fashion, Coopertown is essentially the exact same scope of work, obviously just a little bit different building. Um, so bids again came in very favorably. The uh, estimate was 4.7 million for the construction and the bids came in at just a little over 4 million. So, uh, you know, $700,000 of savings there. Soft costs remain the same. The roof replacement is still an estimate at this point. So uh, you get the project budget total to the 7.1 million versus the uh, originally thought 7.8, which is obviously very good. Uh, the one and alternate, similar to Chatham, is to replace the exterior counters in the original building. Uh, so that cost came in at $73,000 as an ad alternate. We would recommend accept the, the board accepting. Question. Sorry. You know, if, if we're looking at solar for Linwood, is this, will this roof replacement then be a surface that would be suitable for us to consider for solar? Uh, Coopertown, you do have a good amount of flat open roof space at Coopertown. On the existing building especially from the 50s, the, the newer wing from 1990 or whatever it was, has metal roofs that's a lot more sloped roofs, but um, you know a lot of Coopertown roofs are, are pretty wide open. So uh, not having done that study, I'm sure you, you could look at it as an option. Uh, and, and the weight of it, you have to look at, it's pretty minimal. Um, the original wing, you just have to have a structural engineer do a quick check and, and see if that could hold it. That's really your biggest obstacle because if you have to, you know, enhance the steel, then you're getting into, yeah. you know, quite a bit of work uh, and destructive work uh, to be able to do that. So that's really your biggest hurdle with that. Um, so uh, for Coopertown, uh, again, the same would recommend doing those counters as the only alternate to the job. And then as an update, the roofing project, uh, it's been under design. Uh, bid documents are just about complete. Hoping to go out to bid by the end of next week. Have the roofing bids due January 6th. Come back to you all in a month to present those results and then hope for board approval on the 20th of January. This is only phase one. So this is only uh, covering all the metal roofs from the ad addition that was done in, the, in 1990. Um, it's basically to cover it over with a new rubber roof. It's, uh, we have a roof consultant that it's the best recommendation versus trying to repaint it. And then it becomes a maintenance thing over the years to repaint it and repaint it. So, uh, so that's what this bid is for. That's to be done this summer. Then there's a phase two bid to do the original building the following summer, which will be bid sometime in 2022. Uh, it really depends on some of the roofing materials are literally a year out to get. Uh, so it's somewhat dependent on that for when we decide uh, with the roof consultant when to bid it. Um, so hopefully uh, we'll get those numbers back and get some competitive numbers and keep this theme of getting bids under budget rolling. <laughs> For, for the district. So uh, that's that's where we are. Any questions? I have a couple for, um, sure. oh, sorry, the uh, 
contractors that bid Chatham and Coopertown, are they two different firms oh, or will uh, it be the same firm? So, uh, great question. So actually, it was essentially the same bidders for both projects, but ironically, so for the, there's only uh, three contractors, general contractor, HVAC contractor, and electrician. The general contractor is a, the smallest piece of this whole thing, uh, which is about 600 to 700,000. Uh, SB Conrad, who's doing the high school, uh, they got both buildings. And then there's actually a mix of A. N. Lynch got uh, one project as the electrician. Uh, Electrotech, who did the high school phase one, got the other building. And then Dolan Mechanical got one building and Myco Mechanical got the other building. So, and honestly, we we're kind of happy about that. To be frank, you're getting work compressed in the summer and especially from the HVAC to have one contractor that was doing both, you know, that would have been a little concer concerning, but so having two, and they're both bigger contractors. I mean, the HVAC is a huge volume of work here. The electrical scope is five to 700,000. It's not a huge scope, um, but the HVAC was the big one. So, so it actually worked out well, and they're all contractors. Uh, the de design team ourselves have all worked with. Most of them have done work in the district. Uh, JR, Director of Maintenance, worked with Michael Mechanical in his last job, so I hope uh, they'll do a nice job for the district. And you mentioned lead time items are their concerns about getting the HVAC equipment for the schedule that we have because there's work for the summer 22 and then some sure. of it will roll to 23. Uh, that's exactly why we're here to award it now to make sure because really the longest lead item is the chillers uh, and they're 20 to 24 weeks. So we get this awarded now, get it released in January. It'll be here, you know, in plenty of time to have it installed by July. Uh, most of the other smaller equipment is not not that long of a lead time. Um, the boilers, uh, we're just the boilers for the high school, they're only about an eight to 12 week lead time. So um, we're pretty confident it should should be fine based on where we are and getting it, you know, getting it released by the end of January. Did someone else have a question? Yeah. Did we, we didn't vote on the bid approval yet, did we? So that, is that coming to the That's, next That'll meeting? be at the next meeting. Okay. We'll be Just putting, to be for, for the roofing. Um, no, for the you mean, you mean regular the, construction project. Yes, so these two, pro these two projects now will present okay, next so week for the formal the approval okay. to go under contract. Okay. So then next Friday, we'd send a notice of intent to award, okay. start getting all that paperwork okay. going that they awesome. have to submit, you know, insurance, et cetera, uh, and get contracts done and get them moving. Perfect, thank you. So yeah, the process for the board input on this was that we got um, a presentation about the concept and the needs, and then we, uh, at one of our board meetings, approved the, um, process to go ahead and design. release the to design the work and then to do the bidding process and then we'll have a vote to approve these bids that have been um, received be deemed to be the lowest responsible bidders for Correct. each of the projects yeah so when we receive the bids there's they have bid bonds they have affidavits uh, all this paperwork that we review the engineer reviews the district solicitor Weiser Perlstein reviews make sure it's all in order um, and that there's no discrepancies. You know, for example, somebody wrote the wrong number down. It was only two zeros instead of three, but the written, the written bid was correct. The written words were correct. So those are the type of things, a, a silly mistake like that could be a huge problem, obviously. You know, you're not gonna do a job for one zero less. Um, so we review that and make sure everybody, all of that's in line and it was. so the low bidders will be the ones recommended. Any other questions about anything? Thank you. All right, great. Thank you all, nice, nice meeting. We'll be putting that on the agenda for next week. Okay. The last item on the agenda is relative to the 22-23 budget. Um, we are beginning the budget process. Uh, what I am recommending is, and 
what I'd like to bring forward in January is for the board to approve the resolution to remain inside the index. The index for the coming year is 3.4%, which would mean the largest tax increase I could potentially do would be 3.4%. The budget would have to live inside the 3.4% or less. I am not saying I'm presenting a budget for 3.4%. I don't want that to be interpreted that way. It's just simply saying that's the cap. And what the resolution would say is we will live inside that space. So as we bring forward the preliminary budget and the future numbers, it, it will have to live inside that 3.4%. A year ago, you did do a, a resolution. Um, I had attached to the agenda a copy of the resolution that you approved. I also did uh, put a copy of what the state recommends as the template for the resolution um, so that you have both versions of what the resolution potentially could be. I also included a copy of the historical Act 1 index rates um, over the last 10 years. Um, I do want to point out in the 21-22 year, although the index says it's 3.0 percent, that was the year that Delaware County did their reassessment and we were required to remain at the rate from 2020, 2020-2021 at the 2.6%. So when you approved the resolution a year ago, the most you could increase taxes by was the 2.6%. So what I would like to bring forward at a future meeting is this resolution that we will live inside the index for this coming budget. I guess for the benefit of the new folks, just a little background on Act 1 of 2006, the legislature passed a bill that uh, the goal was to limit how much school districts, school boards could raise taxes. Mm -hmm. And every year, the state computes an index based upon the statewide average weekly wage and uh, an inflation index. So if you look at that uh, document where the heading is the index, uh, Act 1 of 2006, you can see what the statewide average weekly wage and the ECI inflation index are. And that's how they end up computing a base index. That base index then can be modified based on uh, sort of the financial condition of the school district. Wealthier school districts are uh, more tied to that base, whereas school districts that have fewer resources may be able to uh, raise taxes a, a little bit higher. And then if any school district wants to go above the index, there are a couple of exception areas that uh, uh, I used to know all of them by heart, but I don't anymore. One, I think, is special ed expenditures. Yes. Um, and I don't know, do we still have an exception for pension increases? It still exists, but it won't be applicable as long as the pension percentage increases so low. Okay. Um, so, you know, if there is a, uh, a vehicle for exceptions, part of what we would be doing is um, passing a resolution that says that we don't intend to go above the index. And the reason that we have to do that is that if we were, if we did want to go above the index, we would have to go and, and not take exceptions. There would, there would have to be a, a vote. Uh, by the public and there need to be enough lead time so that it could be put on the ballot uh, for for the next election. A referendum. Yeah, referendum. Thank you. Yeah, that's helpful. Um, Ms. Q, can you speak to the timeline of this? I see the template resolution and it talks about like once um, once we would submit this resolution, then there are certain um, subsequent submissions that we be, would be making to the state. What's the timeline for us to pass this resolution and then be prepared for um, the tax rate that we would be proposing and, you know, the budget discussion that supports that? 
the um, resolution itself must be passed. I think it's late January. I didn't bring my time schedule with me. Um, and it is counting back from the election date, right? right? They, okay. Um, after that, after the resolution would be passed, I need to complete some paperwork with the state that indicates we're going to live inside that index, that we won't go above that. After that, then we build our budget and present to you the budget with all of the various constraints that we would have to do to make sure we meet the commitments of the district as well as um, provide the various tools we need for our students and things. Um, and we work through to May where we will pr 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 provide the proposed final budget and then in June you would pr approve the final final budget. So, but there will be lots of meetings in between now and then where we will be reviewing the budget and, and building it. And one of the kind of advantages, I guess, of, of making the certification that we will stay within the Act 1 index is kind of a reduction of some of the budget presentations. Is that right? That what it, quite honestly, one of the things it does is help the business office that we have more time because if you don't pass the resolution, I must present a preliminary budget in, in early February. Okay. That the board must pass that preliminary budget in early February, and it must be a complete budget. All aspects of the budget must be complete. If it was an election year, actually, I'd have to present the preliminary budget in January because our state moves up the primary election in a presidential election year so that you have to adjust mm -hmm. because the referendum window is smaller. And, and maybe this is a question for Mr. Feinberg, who's got the, the longer memory and experience with all of this, but um, in Haverford Township, um, I, I recall one time where we did use the special ed um, exception to um, add a little bit more above the base index, um, but do we, is it kind of typical that we stay within the Act 1, um, or have we sought? I, I think that Going, looking at this chart that goes back to 2012, 2013, mm -hmm. we have uh, tended to stay within the index. Prior years from 2006 up to 2012, I think that uh, my, my recollection is more often than not, we used exceptions. Okay. And for the public's benefit in, in looking at this index, um, the 3.4%, that is the figure for the um, allowable tax increase next year is the highest rate of increase in the last 10 years, um, where it had previously ranged from 1.7% to 2.6 or 3% um, the year that we couldn't use the 3%. And one of the things that the school board needs to take into consideration is, is balancing the rate of increase in any one year versus um, kind of having a, a stable growth of our tax base. Um, so there's not shockers. Different districts may have different ways of implementing it. Some um, may try to have zero, 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 zero percent increases for several years and then do one big jump. Um, I think the practice of Haverford Township has been to um, have more modest increases over time um, that supports the tax base and um, in the finance presentation that we had when PFM came in to look at our borrowing ability and, and you know, the debt service coverage, they also model some expectation of um, the rate of our tax increase to assess our ability to support those bond offerings for our capital projects. You know, and on this chart, it appears that the statewide average weekly wage increase is, is the big driver. Right. Martha, could you just tell me, what was the index? I'm sorry if you've said it. What was the index for last year? 2.6%. 2.6%. What it, when you are in a countywide reassessment, you are required to use the prior year index as your basis for any tax increase. So even though the set base was 3%, this county couldn't use, couldn't use that. They had to use the 2.6, which was the prior year.
Any other questions or discussion? Um, I have one question. Besides the construction that we've we've heard from, are there any an estimated or anticipated large um, budget items that we have that are like new coming this year versus previous years? I don't know of any new projects beyond the ones that mm -hmm. have been discussed at this point. Um, one of the things that um, you know, the board and the public should recognize is that a lot of the district's costs are um, not kind of variable or flexible from year to year. They're baked in with, um, you know, as a service business, we um, have a large portion of our costs being for our staff uh, to uh, provide the educational services that we have. Um, and you know, those are contracted um, and negotiated and um, have the benefits and the pension costs that go with those. Um, there's not a lot of discretion year in, year out that this board has over a significant portion of most of our budget. There are some items that have some more variability or, or flexibility discretion, but um, when we get into the budget discussion, you'll see that it's um, a rather small portion of the overall $135 million of our operating budget. Yeah, I think it's somewhere between 75 and 85 percent of the budget is salaries and benefits. Between 75 and 80, yes. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the items that the board is required to do by law is to pass a, a balanced budget. And it's kind of like painting a bridge. We work on the budget all year. And we finally get the budget finalized June 30th and almost right away start working on the next year's budget. And there are, I think, at least three or four uh, uh, points along the way where we're required to present preliminary versions of the budget in public meetings and discuss it in public meetings. So you'll see uh, all of that happen. Yeah, so we'll stay tuned for more good budget discussions and digging into that. Um, if there's no other discussion on this agenda item, we are up to the public comment portion of our agenda. And Lou, is there anything you would like to say tonight? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hearing none, then uh, I guess I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.